All right, great. So let's uh, let's go through an example here of how we are going to decide uh, what parameters to use for our trade. The underlying security here we are looking at is NVIDIA. So let's go ahead and look at the chart for NVIDIA first. Okay. All right, so we're looking at a chart for NVIDIA and we notice that the current price is 796. And there's a gap right above that that we think is going to be filled uh, right now, the gap is from 796 all the way to about uh, 815, give or take. But we're going to target to exit around 70% of that gap. So we're going to target getting out at $810. So the difference between 810 and 796 is about $10, is about uh, $14. Now, $14 is what we are looking at uh, getting. So going back to our option chain, uh, go ahead and click on trade. All right, we're going to choose a strike price, uh, a little bit out of the money for this particular example. We have already done one for uh, in the money at an expiration of July 30, but we're going to do another example here for a shorter expiration, this case one day but uh, a little bit out of the money based on the budget that we have right now of about $400. So we want to spend just under 400. Because of that, we have identified that this strike price of 805 is a good one. Uh, let me draw better, uh, draw better square on that, the rectangle. This is the one that we think that uh, is going to be favorable for us. Couple of things we should note. I like to choose strike prices that have got either a five or a zero at the end. That's because that's the way the big institutions work. They talk in terms of round, you know, whole numbers. So eight or five seems pretty good. Now, another thing to notice is that eight or five is simply the basis for this contract. This is just a strike price. It is not the price of the underlying. In fact, the price of the underlying is 796.11 at the time that we're doing this recording. So not to be confused, there's 805, which is the strike price, but the price of the underlying is actually right now at 796. We've also identified that it will potentially increase by $14. So 14 plus 796 is 810. If we're going to choose a strike price of eight or five and we're doing a call, this is the column that we're interested in right here. And we also pay attention to the delta. This is the delta column. And what the delta tells us right now, it's 30 cents. It tells us that for every increase in $1 of the underlying, that means when Nvidia increases from 796 to 797, to 798, every time it increases by $1, this premium is going to increase, this premium of $3.50 is going to increase by 30 cents. So we've just defined that delta is the rate of increase of the premium for every change of the underlying by $1. So remember, the Opposite is also true. If the price decreases from 796 to 795, then this premium will decrease by 30 cents. So both ways are true, going up or going down. Now, since we've also identified that potentially we could go to $14, we can calculate our expected payout at 30 cents times 14, which gives us 400 and 20, or oh, 30 cents times, uh, four, uh, times 14 is four dollars and 20 cents. And we add that four dollars and 20 cents to the 350 to give us what the expected premium value is going to be at that time. So if the price of Nvidia increases from 796 to 810, the premium will be 350 plus 420, which gives us 720. 770. So now that we have that math, we're going to go ahead and place an order. 
And the way to do that is to right click on the $3.50. And we're going to choose a bracket order. The way to do that is to buy custom with OCO bracket. We're going to set up our order here. We're going to accept the default here of $3.50. That's what we would like. We're going to set up our buyback order, sorry, our sell order, which we calculated to be $7.70. That will give us a profit of $4.20. And we're going to accept the default stop of $2.50. And just to explain that, it means that if the price of the underlying reduces and such that the premium goes down to 250, then a stop market event will take place and we'll be exiting this trade with a loss of 100. So we are accepting that $100 loss. And this is a good risk to reward scenario because we're risking $100 for potential payout of $4.20 or $420. Remember the 100 multiplier, that's why I'm sometimes saying $4.20 and other times I'm saying 420. Okay. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is adjust our quantity here from 10 to one because we've uh, decided that we only want to play with just the one. So go ahead and change from 10, uh, quantity of 10 to one for each of those legs. And these legs have to be the same uh, in size, so just one. The next thing we're going to do is change this from a day order to a GTC order. We're doing these after hours, so we want to make sure that this order is filled uh, at the beginning of uh, business tomorrow. All right, and then we identify, we cross check uh, everything. We're entering the trade at 350, we are exiting at uh, 770 and our stop loss is $2.50. Everything looks good. The next thing we want to do is click on confirm and send. We review the order once more to make sure that we've got three legs. We are looking at an entry here of uh, 350. Uh, we're looking at a take profit order here of uh, 7.70 and our, our stop loss here of uh, $2.50. Everything looks good. We've confirmed. So we'll go ahead and click on send. Now, if we want to monitor that particular transaction that, that we just did, we will go to the monitor screen or the monitor tab, sorry. And we will see that uh, we now have a new order that was placed and we can uh, keep track of it. Notice that uh, the way we know that it is a uh, it is an OCO or a bracket order is because we can see this lock right here. And then we can also see that there's these two, the next two orders are linked. There's a chain link uh, icon that tells us that this, this is one whole order right here. Another thing that tells us that this is a bracket order is that we can see that there's a word trigger. So those are some of the things that you wanna look out for when you're trying to understand your monitor screen to see what it is that uh, that you did. Once this order is filled, right now it's in the working orders section. When the order gets filled, it is going to be transferred into the field orders, right? The field orders. It is going to stay there for as long as the order is uh, is, is 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 in operation. And then once that happens, once that is complete then it is going to go over to the account statement. We haven't gone there yet. So we're going to end our demonstration uh, right now. All right, good deal. And let me stop recording.